Alex Pajeda has a better legacy than Habib Nurmagomedov, and I'm going to prove it in this video. Yes, I'm talking about mixed martial arts, because if we were talking about combat sports more broadly, there's not even a debate to be had. But ever since UFC 307, I have seen people going crazy in comment sections and on Twitter spaces and things like that talking about this, so I figured I would give my two cents, okay? So we're going to get into the arguments, but first I just want to touch on something briefly. I understand I'm going to get called a poetard or whatever it is they call them, right? I understand I'm going to get accused of glazing, and that's fine. I don't really care. What I just want to point out is, though, the fan base that will do that, the fan base of Habib, the fan base of Islam, the fan base of Magomed Ankalaev, these guys are guilty of that maybe more than anybody, right? They glaze their fighter so hard, okay? It's insane. They are unhinged. If you pick against their fighter, if you criticize one of those fighters, you will get attacked in the comment sections, right? And something that they do is they throw out this word Islamophobia like right away which is not only bitch, it's thought terminating. And once they've done that, there's really no discussion to be had because those people are not willing to even try and argue merits. So I just thought I would throw that out there. Also, since they want to call me a poetard or whatever, dude, I've got a name for them. Now I've been calling them this for like two years. Okay, now unfortunately it's not really caught on. I, I don't know why, but I call them DDRs. And I'm not talking about the game that you might see some nimble Asian dude just killing it on, right, in an arcade or something. It stands for Dagestani Dick Rider, because that's what they are. You'll, you know, you'll hear them say really stupid shit, like Habib is the fucking goat, and I did not just say that Habib fucks goat, so calm down. But, you know, they say stupid shit like that. They're the ones that will attack you in comment sections. They're the ones that YouTube has to hold their comments for review because sometimes they get violent. But uh, either way, okay, let's get into the argument. So first, what I want to do is I want to talk about their resume as a whole and the quality of the opponents on that resume, okay? Habib Nurmagomedov, I'm sure many of you will be aware, okay? This guy has a padded record he just does it's it's not arguable and look for the first little bit here i don't even necessarily have an issue with that because he himself at this point is inexperienced uh so he's got to fight guys that are relatively you know on his level once we get to about like here though then it becomes a bit of an issue when you're in your 15th fight and you're fighting a guy making his debut that screams padded record. Like if there's, if this is not a padded, padded record rather, I don't know what would be considered one. And then, you know, we when we get into the UFC, we've got some decent opponents, but not really until about here. Even though people forget, man, Gleason Tibau could have won that fight. So when a Habib fan tells you, never lost a round or whatever the dumb shit they say, you know, point out the T-Bow fight. A lot of people forget about that one. We don't really see a good opponent until about here. Rafael Dos Anjos, which is a good win. I'll give it to him. But, you know, he's a former champion. Rafael Dos Anjos, historically speaking, struggles with large guys, guys that are a lot bigger than him, that also like to use a more grappling and wrestling heavy style attack. You know, a bad matchup, if you will, which we will get to that in just a little bit, okay? Because I know that's what we're going to do. Either way, you know, Barboza's a decent win, although Barboza, same, struggles with a lot of guys that are bigger than him, that like to wrestle, right? Bad matchup, if you will, for Barboza. Also, he is undersized a little bit. He went down to featherweight and has looked fine since, you know, has had no problem not making weight and and stuff like that. So, you know, it's an, it's an okay win. And then we have this, which we will get to in a minute, where Habib Nurmagomedov won his belt. First, I just want to go touch on Alex Pajeda's mixed martial arts record. Now, it's not as big, right? But after the first three fights, we're now in the LFA, which is a much better organization than something like... Atrium 
Pancration Club, Cup or whatever, okay? <laughs> right? So he's in the LFA and then he goes into the UFC. He's had four fights. Four fights to get to the UFC. Habib took 16. This is what uh, not a padded record looks like. He's essentially been fighting the best competition on the planet in terms of the promotion since his fourth fight. I understand Andre Michalaitis is not that good of a win, right? But at the very least, he was in the UFC. Bruno Silva has fought a lot of good guys. And I understand he doesn't have you know, not, not necessarily the best showing of himself in the UFC, but he's given a lot of guys trouble, right? We're in the third fight in the UFC before Alex Pajeda fights top level competition and what is now a former champion in Sean Strickland. Whereas it took Habib Nurmagomedov a lot more than that. Okay. One, why topology is tripping? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's that. Then we get to the championship part, okay? I'll jump back to Habib now. Habib won his belt fighting Al Quinta. It was a vacant title. Conor McGregor had been stripped because of a side quest that he took to go fight Floyd Mayweather and inactivity, right? Now, a vacant title isn't inherently a bad thing. It kind of depends on who you fought in that vacant title fight, though. Ally Quinta was never in the conversation for a title. He never was after that either. He's not a championship level fighter, not even remotely close. And I understand this wasn't necessarily Habib's fault because Tony Ferguson was supposed to be there. One of the times Tony had to pull out. Out of five times, I believe Habib pulled out three and Tony twice. So I'm not going to, you know, it's not his fault that he fought Ally Quinta, but he did fight Ally Quinta. When we jump back to Alex Pajeda and we see Israel Adesanya on there. Now, I don't like Israel Adesanya, but what he did in the middleweight division is a, it's undeniable. He was a long reigning champion. And while he had some fights that were close enough that, you know, some of them were considered maybe more controversial, like the second Robert Whitaker fight, he was the long reigning champion. Alex Pajeda took the title off of him rather than beating, you know, uh, Habib Nurmagomedov winning against Ally Quinta to get a championship belt is the equivalent of Alex Pajeda if he were to won the belt fighting Khalil Roundtree in a vacant title fight. That's what that's like, okay? So that right there is better than how Habib won the belt. It's a more legitimate champion, right? I would consider right here Habib Nurmagomedov at this point until he went on to fight Conor McGregor an illegitimate champion, an illegitimate king of fe of uh, lightweight, right? He's the he's the Joffrey in more ways than one of lightweight at this point in time, okay? Now we're going to get to the title defenses. All right. Now, there's something that gets said about Alex Pajeda quite often. We even heard it post UFC 307 that you can't give him full credit because all of his opponents have been good matchups for him. They all want to strike, is what they say. Uh, and they say that Magomed Ankalaev is a bad matchup for him, so until he fights Magomed, you know, he's kind of, in a way, just, you know, you can't glaze him as much as you could if he were to beat Magomed, because Magomed is a bad matchup for him, because Magomed can wrestle. Now, I'm going to take that argument and flip it on its head. An uno reverse, if you will, okay? If Magomed Ankalaev is a bad matchup for Alex Pajeda because he can wrestle, that presupposes, then, that a wrestler is a bad matchup for somebody that wants to strike, okay? What do we see when we look at Habib Nurmagomedov's title defenses? I see three strikers. Okay. Conor McGregor is a good win, a former champion, only one of two that Habib has defeated, by the way. Interim titles do not count, and I will get to that in a minute because that is more a knock on Habib 
than it is the opposite direction. Conor McGregor is a striker. That's it. The only time I can think of where he offensively wrestled in a fight was against Max Holloway, where he tore his knee. So he had to in order to secure the victory. And then we move to Dustin Poirier. A good win, very good win, but a striker. Not only a striker, a one-dimensional striker, a boxer, a guy that doesn't throw a lot of kicks, a guy that doesn't do much else other than boxing combinations. And while he's very good at it, you know, I've not really seen Dustin Poirier like time a knee on a guy. He also struggles with grapplers. Justin Gaethje. I know somebody's going to be like, well, he wrestled in college. I super don't give a fuck because he got tapped quicker than all of them. He put up less resistance than Dustin or Connor by like a lot. He was taken down super easily. Guard was passed super easily in both rounds one and rounds two of that fight. Justin Gaethje in the UFC there was a time he was fighting Eddie Alvarez. It He had an allergic reaction to him trying to wrestle. I don't know if it was his body fighting his mind or his mind fighting his body, but one of them realized that one of them was going for a takedown and it fucking flipped him back the other way. Literally, he did like a backward somersault. So when people try to say that he fought a good wrestler in Justin Gaethje, that's fucking ridiculous, okay? That's ridiculous. As a matter of fact... The real tough matchup for Habib, right before he got there, is when Habib dipped. And I'm talking about Charles Oliveira. A guy with very good grappling, a guy who is not afraid to go to the ground, a guy with much better striking than Habib Nurmagomedov. And I know they're going to be like, well, Islam beat him, so it doesn't really matter. We saw how that worked. No, we don't. Because Islam Makachev is a way better striker than Habib, and it's not even close. His technique is way better. It's not even close. And Islam Makachev started that finishing sequence by dropping Charles Oliveira with a counter shot. Okay, so if Alex Pajeda has fought good matchups because he has not fought a wrestler, that presupposes that wrestlers are bad matchups for strikers. That would mean that all of Habib's title defenses were favorable matchups to him. And again, again, I'll stress the time that he was going to fight somebody or could have potentially fought somebody that would have actually been a very, on paper at least, a bad matchup or a questionable matchup is when he left. And if we go back to a guy who wanted to wrestle with him, Gleason Tibau, he very well should have lost that fight. So I'm sick of hearing that matchup argument that, well, Alex Pajeda's only fought guys that strike with him. So it's, you know he needs to fight a wrestler because wrestlers are bad matchups for strikers. Well, then Habib was the good matchup in all of those fights, right? He had good matchups for him every time he defended his title. But we'll, we'll take a look at something else. So like I pointed out, we've got one former champion in this group of title defenses for Habib. If we go to Alex Pajeda, we have got, uh, you know, he not, he's beat five different champions and he's, beat them a total of six times but two out of his three title defenses have been against champions he won the title albeit vacant against a champion yuri prohaska not only was he the champ not only was he a former champion he was a champion that won his belt legitimately off of glover Teixeira, injured himself and never lost the belt and let it go so that is like, in terms of winning a vacant title, beating a guy that was the champion that won the belt legitimately by finish in the fifth round of a crazy fight, a guy who left due to an injury who never lost his belt, that's about as good as it gets. Alex Pajeda essentially beat the like lineal champion of the he light heavyweight division at that point. I understand John Jones and whatever, but you know what I mean. And then he defends it against another champion. And then he fights the same champion he won it off of and beats him way better than he did the first time. By the way, people like to just forget this. Yuri Prohaska tried to wrestle with him in the, the first fight, took him down and wasn't able to do a whole lot with it. 
Jan Blahovich, by the way, right before the title fight, who was another champion, took him down, took his back, and held it for four minutes and couldn't find a choke, couldn't put him in a situation where he was about to be finished. So it's not like these opponents. I understand Jamal Hill and Khalil and Yuri in the second fight. They've all not wanted to grapple. But it's not like he's not had grappling tests. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But when we look at two champions, two former champions, and then Khalil Roundtree, in my opinion, that's more impressive than one former champion. Now, well, let's talk about the interim part, okay? I think that the interim championships of Dustin Poirier and Justin Gaethje is a knock on Habib as a champion. Because when we take a look at... So right now, they've got the same amount of title defenses. It took Habib. He defended his title for the first time that he won off of Ally Aquinta, again, the King Joffrey of the lightweight division, okay? In more ways than one. I'll just leave it at that. Defended his title for the first time in October of 2018. We didn't see him again until 11 months later. Almost a year. And that's why Dustin Poirier had an interim championship. Because it took a year for him to defend his belt. Because I wonder why, dude. Because he wanted to go to Abu Dhabi. And then we have Ju Justin Gaethje over a year later. Which is why he had an interim championship. We have Habib waiting for a year before defending his title, both of which in Abu Dhabi, by the way. Those three title defenses took him three calendar years, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Alex Pajeda defended his title three times in six months. May, June, or April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Or April to May is the first month, by the way. Six months. Six or seven months. No interim titles required. So I, you know, people might view Dustin Poirier or Justin Gaethje as a champion because they won an interim title. But in my opinion, that's a knock on Habib rather than it is a plus. They were never undisputed champions like Yuri, like Jamal was. They were interim champions. And the only reason they were interim champions is because of how inactive... Habib Nurmagomedov was. So that's another knock on Habib, okay? Let's see what else we've got here. I've got a few more arguments, okay? Oh, yeah. Habib's fans will point out that Israel Adesanya knocked out Alex Pajeda. Meanwhile, 29-0, and 0, whatever the fuck they say, right? And fair enough, dude. Although most of the people in the GOAT discussion, aside from John Jones, who actually does have a loss on his record, right? It's a, D a DQ, but still. Um, Anderson Silva, George St. Pierre, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson, all these guys have losses on their records. George St. Pierre, def uh, you know, got him back. What, do you, what, do you, what would you call that, dude? He avenged them, my bad. Both his losses, brutally. One of them twice. Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson, when he lost in one championship he came back and fucked that dude up with one of the fuck prettiest knees i've ever seen in my life all of the people in the goat discussion even john jones although it was a dq loss have losses on their record now alex pajeda's loss to israel adesanya took place at middleweight because alex pajeda's got titles in two different divisions which already in my opinion puts him a little bit above habib but you know, the reason he got knocked out, because he was at middleweight, he was cutting too much weight. And after he got knocked out, he realized that and he went, you know what, I'll go up there with the big boys. And he has. And he's defended his title three times since. And he's undefeated. This is something that Habib Nurmagomedov was afraid to do. Okay, when we take a look at all of the canceled fights, we take a look at the weight miss. Here, we take a look at the cancelled fight against Melendez. Two against Cerrone. Ferguson, five times. I understand two of them were Tony, but still. Max Holloway, one wasn't him either, but... We've got a lot of cancelled fights. Okay. We had the, the uh, you know, the situation with, I believe it was Dustin Poirier. Maybe it was Gaethje. Where Habib's scale was still moving. And the Abu Dhabi commission just went, whoop. All good. 155. Habib Nurmagomedov refused to go up and wait, even though he was having very similar weight cuts to Alex Pajeda. 
and Alex Pajeda, rather than have a fight canceled, like Habib did multiple times over weight cuts, he went out there and he got overzealous and he got knocked out. And then he went up in weight and fucked shit up, okay? Habib Nurmagomedov refused to do that. Not only did he refuse to do that, he refused to fight George St. Pierre to catch weight. You know, so it's just, it, Habib Nurmagomedov, in my opinion, while he's got a good legacy, is not anywhere remotely close to Alex Pajeda. And by the way, Alex Pajeda still has time. You know, I don't think either of these guys right now are in the GOAT discussion, if I'm being honest, even though I am a big Alex Pajeda fan. I don't think either of them are. But Alex Pajeda has the potential to be because he's still here. Right? He's 38 years old almost, and he's still here. And if he was to go up to heavyweight, you know, I don't think he would do overly well against some of the guys there, like a Tom Aspinall or whatever. But if he was to win a third championship, I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. Even if he was to win a few fights against highly ranked guys, like, I, you know. But Habib, in my opinion, can never be in the GOAT discussion. Again, let's just recap quickly. Right, Two former champions for Habib. Six for Alex Pajeda. Habib has four wins in championship fights. Alex Pajeda has five. Habib won his belt fighting Al Iaquinta, a guy that was ranked outside the top five, basically a Khalil Roundtree. Um, was never in discussion for a title, never was after. Alex Pajeda won his belt fighting Yuri Prohaska, who was the champion of that division, had to vacate it, never lost. And Israel Adesanya, the long-reigning middleweight champion. Okay. The matchups that I'm sick of hearing about, by the way. But if, if a wrestler is a bad matchup for a striker, which is what is what that that when you say that Magomed is a bad matchup for Alex Pajeda, that's what you're presupposing there. Then that means Habib had all easy matchups. Right? Habib had to have two interim titles. For his division, because it took him three calendar years to defend the same amount of times it took it took Alex Pajeda, 175 days. <laughs> Habib's record is padded to shit. In Alex Pajeda's like fifth or sixth fight, he was fighting Sean Strickland, who at the time was a top level middleweight and went on to become a champion. Alex Pajeda moved up in weight class because he realized he was cutting too much weight. Whereas Habib Nurmagomedov remained a weight bully throughout his career, had to cancel many fights because of it, had kidney issues because of it, was hospitalized on occasions because of it, and never went up and got a second belt. So I think I've made my case pretty well here. I don't know many arguments that could rebut this, uh, but I, I encourage you to try and do so in the comment section below. If you want to try and change my mind, I would you know read them gladly. Okay, so uh, look, man, I think Alex Pajeda, much, in my opinion, a way better legacy than Habib Nurmagomedov. And again, we're simply talking mixed martial arts. If we were to broaden this into uh, combat sports at large, and we were to include his kickboxing resume, he beat some of the best kickboxers on the planet. On the planet. Jason Wilness, Abina. I mean, this guy's... If you don't understand... Simon Marcus, Balguri. If you don't know kickboxing, these names might not mean much to you. They're all very good wins. And he was a two-division champion there. Two-division champion in the UFC. You know, six wins over champions since he's been in the UFC. To me, this isn't even a discussion. But, you know, what are you, what are you gonna do? Uh, like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. I will see you at the next video. Bye-bye.